Hey there internets, I'm Michael and today on Two Can Play That Game I'm going to teach you how to play Let Them Eat Cake by Osprey Games. So to start the game everyone must shake hands, there we go, shaking hands. And then each player needs to pick what colour they're going to be. So I'm going to set up for a free player game. And um, we're going to have blue, white and red. They then need to take the free pawns for their colour. And then also a voting card for each other player. If you're doing a free or a four player game like we are here, they'll take two for each other player. So the blue player will take voting cards, two white and two red. They will keep those face down in front of them. Then each player gets given free medals, and it doesn't matter the design of the medals, just free medals of any design. And you'll take the starting cake cards, which are these cake cards with the striped back border there, and you'll shuffle these up. It doesn't really matter, it's just it for the sake of image, they're all worth one point. And you'll give two to each player. Again, they'll keep these face down. Then you need to pick your first head of committee. You can do this randomly or just whoever owns the game and give them the head of committee token. They'll be breaking ties in the first vote, but otherwise the first vote is going to be to decide who your new head of committee is. So it doesn't make a huge difference. Then in the middle of the table, you want to place your guillotine, having assembled it, three spare medals, and the basic generals, which are again, these have the striped background, so that's how you know they don't go in your pantry deck. So this just needs to be in the middle of the table within reach of all players. You then want to get your pantry deck, which is made up of your general cards and cake cards that don't have that striped border. So you shuffle these all up and then just put them face down in the middle of the table. And so with your table all set up for a free player game, it should look something like this. You can then find the order of play on the player aids. So on the pink side, you can see it lists the order of voting. And that's what this game is all about, going through these different stages of votes. So the first vote you will do is for the head of committee. Now, Whoever the head of committee is will get the head of committee token and they'll break any ties when voting. The way voting will work is each player will pick one of the voting cards they have in secret and play it face down in the table. So let's say red votes for white, blue votes for white, and then white can't vote for white, but they're going to vote for red. Then you reveal your cards. So we can see white, white, and red. The number of votes each player has is equal to the number of pawns that they still have. So in this case, everyone will start the game with three votes. So here, white had a total of six votes from the blue and red player, and the red player had three votes from the white player. Which means that the white player won the vote and is now head of committee, so the token passes to them. For this first vote, and literally just this first vote, even future head of committee votes this does not apply for, anyone who voted against the majority at this stage loses a medal. So obviously whoever wins the vote is going to end up losing a medal. And that just goes to the centre of the table. Whenever you lose a medal, it goes there. Whenever you gain one, it comes from there. Unless there are none available, in which point you can't gain any. Then let's go back to how it's going to work for every round. So now, having been elected head of committee, the head of committee gains a medal. So in this first round, that kind of nets out. Then they can also choose either another player, not themselves again though, to gain a medal from the middle, or to lose a medal. So we're going to have this red player lose a medal. Then with the vote over, each player will turn over their used cards. So you can't see what cards they have used, 
but they do not get them back to use until they have used all of the cards they have for voting. Next, we move on to Enemy of the Revolution. Now, the Enemy of the Revolution isn't necessarily going to be voted in. It all depends on the number of medals people have and the number of general cards people have. So, if you have the most generals, you're immune from being the Enemy of the Revolution, no matter how many medals you have. And if you're tied, that still counts. Obviously, at the moment, no one has any generals, so no one is immune. Which means, because the red player has the fewest medals, they are automatically the enemy of the revolution. Which means, we take one of their pawns, and we place it on the guillotine. It is now at risk of having its head cut off. And it means that this player has fewer voting power, because they now only have two pawns. So each time they play a card, it only counts as two votes, not three. If, however, everyone had had the same number of medals, we would have a vote to determine who is the enemy of the revolution. And this would work exactly the same way as the previous vote, with everyone picking a card, and then the majority of votes would be the enemy. Now, only votes for people who were eligible would count, but you can still vote for another player. It just is the equivalent of abstaining from voting but you must put a card in always. So we have our enemy of the revolution at the guillotine. Now what happens? Well, we need to decide who will be operating the guillotine to know what will happen. And once again, this does come down to a vote. So each player picks a card and then we reveal. Keeping in mind, because the red player only has two pawns, their votes count for less. So the white player had two votes, blue has three votes, and red has three votes. So what that means is that white is out of the running, and that we have a tie on the red and blue player being the guillotine operator. So how do we decide who gets this? Well, the head of committee breaks any ties. So he's going to go, well, I voted for blue, I'm going to choose blue. So blue is the guillotine operator. As the guillotine operator, they now have a choice. They can either execute the pawn that is there, or they can grant mercy. However, granting mercy may mean that the person gets their pawn back, but it means whoever the guillotine operator is loses a medal for not doing their job. So the blue player is going to choose not to grant mercy because they don't want to lose the medal. So they go off with his head and he goes into the basket. When a player's pawn gets executed like this, they do get some compensation. Firstly, they gain free medals. And they get to take one of these face-up generals here. So this now means they're much less likely to lose another pawn by being the enemy of the revolution. Firstly, because they've now got the most generals, so they're immune. But even if someone catches up on generals, they've got a lot more medals. With the guillotine operator's job done, we move on to the next vote, which is for the secretary. So again, voting works in exactly the same way. Everyone puts in a card face down. Once everyone's picked one, we reveal, and then we tally up the votes. So red had three votes from the blue here, but blue was voted for by two players, giving him five votes, because that's the number of pawns they have. So blue is the secretary. Now, what the secretary does is they will take the pantry cards and they will deal out a number equal to the number of players. So these pantry cards are made up of generals and also cake. They will then attribute these one to each player. So they'll go, well, I want the cake and I'll give the other two players a general each. Because cake is your victory points. In fact, the first person to have 40 value worth of cake hidden down in front of them will win the game. 
Now you can use cake and also use medals and generals in order to try and convince people to vote in your favour. You can do any sort of bribing you want during these votes. However, the one thing you cannot give away is you cannot give away your identity card, you cannot give away your pawns, and you cannot give away your voting cards. So those are off the table when it comes to bribery and corruption, but everything else goes. And the same goes here for where you're trying to decide who to give what. The red player could go, well, if you give me that 14 cake, I'll give you all my medals, or some such like that. So with the secretary's job done of giving out the different cards, we then have another election. And this is the final election in the round, and it is for the food inspector. So once again, everyone puts in a card. And we've only got the one card, so we know what the results are. And we have a draw on the red and white. So breaking the ties, we have white. And so surprisingly, white is going to choose themselves to be the food inspector. And what the food inspector does is they look at the cards and they go, well, do I want those people to get their cake? Is that cake safe to eat? So if they declare it unsafe, then all the cake cards that have been given out get taken away and put to the bottom of the deck and the food inspector loses a medal for doing so which would just go to the centre of the table the alternative of course is they can say yes the cake is safe to eat you may keep your cake at which point the player who received that cake can add it to their cake pile alternatively they can scream, let them eat cake! At which point they take that card and put it to the bottom of the cake deck. Now obviously you probably wouldn't do it with such a high value card as a 14, but say rather than a general, this player here got given a two. So they might choose to then say, let them eat cake. This guy will keep his, but this guy says, let them eat cake. Now the reason you would do that is that when you do this, a, you're getting rid of that low value, but in exchange, you are getting to take a medal off someone. So this red player was a bit bitter about losing their pawn from the guillotine operator. So they want to steal a medal off of this white player, because that's what saying let them eat cake like that allows you to do. Now, if there are multiple people who want to, to say let them eat cake, it's just whoever says it first who gets to go first. And that would then be the end of the round. And you'll simply carry on doing round after round of voting and voting and voting until one player, secretly hidden away, has their 40 cake. They'll then reveal that and go, I have won the game. I am the head of the revolution. The one thing I haven't yet talked about is that these generals have a different use as well as just protecting you from being the enemy of the revolution. The other thing you can do with them is listed on the other side of your player aid here. So you can use one general to allege vote rigging, which allows you to call for a new vote after one has happened immediately. So say we just did that final vote and you weren't happy with it, you could throw away a general and go vote rigging, at which point everyone has to do another vote. Now they don't get to use the card that they just used. So let's say we were a few votes in, we were down to three cards available to vote with, and we did another vote and someone alleged vote rigging. They don't get to take the card back they just voted with. They still only have those two cards available. So it can quite dramatically change the result of that vote. Using two generals, they can seize cake. So this is when the secretary is distributing cards to the various players. So let's say we've got our three cards here. Someone can play two generals because they want to seize this 12 value cake here. So they play their generals and the secretary has no say about what card they get. They just pick the one they want. And the final thing is that with three generals, you can declare a coup which means that you just declare who wins a vote. You don't even do the vote. You don't use cards or anything. You just go, 
this person is going to have this job. And that is how you play Let Them Eat Cake by Osprey Games. I do hope that you've enjoyed this video and found it useful. And of course, if you have, please do check out the rest of the videos on the channel as well as subscribing to the channel and sharing it with your friends and family. And do also take a look at us on social media. You can find us on Facebook and on Twitter. And as always, thanks for watching and bye for now.